So you have decided to take up the GMAT. Let me congratulate you for taking up this challenge. Having a top GMAT score will help you get into your dream B school. It will also help you get a good scholarship with your admission and also after you're done with your MBA, a good GMAT score will help you get into consulting or investment banking and such highly competitive fields. So again, let me congratulate you for embarking on this journey. Now in this video, let's try to understand the GMAT Focus Edition. Now the GMAT Focus Edition has three sections as you can see over here, the verbal reasoning section, the quantitative reasoning section and the data insights section. Let's try to understand the GMAT Focus and its various aspects in this video. Starting with the verbal reasoning section, you will be given 45 minutes to attempt 23 questions and on the verbal reasoning section you will have reading comprehension questions and critical reasoning questions. When it comes to the quantitative reasoning section you will be given 45 minutes for attempting 21 questions and all the 21 questions are going to be problem solving questions. And when it comes to the data insight section you will be given 45 minutes to attempt 20 questions. Now on the data insight section, you will have data sufficiency questions and you will have questions which were previously part of integrated reasoning. Okay, so the questions which were previously part of IR or integrated reasoning are these four types of questions which are multi-source reasoning, table analysis, graphics interpretation and two-part analysis. So that's how these sections are structured or these are the type of questions that you can expect in these respective sections and the number of questions and the time allocated to various sections. So you can see that the GMAT focus comprises of three sections and for each section you're given 45 minutes. So the total duration of the test is two hours and 15 minutes. Okay. And you can see that the total number of questions is 23 plus 21 plus 20, which is equal to 64 questions. You can see that for the verbal reasoning section, you're getting just below two minutes per question, right? Because you have 23 questions and 45 minutes. Now, when it comes to the quantitative reasoning section and the data insights section, you're getting a little bit about two minutes per question. Okay. So it's good to practice attempting questions with a, like once you are thorough with the topics, you can start practicing and your aim should be to solve a question in about two minutes. Now, all the three sections over here count towards your final score on the GMAT focus. So we have seen that all the three sections count for your final score. Now the range of possible scores on the GMAT focus is between 205 and 805 and they move in increments of 10 points. Now over here you can see that every score will have a 5 in the units digit, right? So the previous score previous to 805 would be 795 and it goes on in that way. So this is done so that when you're applying to a school, right, the school will be able to know whether you have taken the traditional or the previous classical GMAT or the GMAT focus. Because if you've taken the classical GMAT, your score would end in a zero. So it was like, for example, 800 or 760, etc. So over here, you can see the scores always end in five. Now, we have seen that the range is between 205 and 805. Now, when it comes to the individual sections, the scores for a section range between 60 and 90. And the scores move in increments of one point. All right. So we have got a good idea about the sections on the GMAT focus and the possible scores. Going on, you can see that on MBA.com, there is a chart given which compares the score and the percentile interpretation of the score. Notice over here that any score between 755 and 805 is considered a 100 percentile and over here also notice that a 705 is considered a 99 percentile. Alright, now remember once you get your score, the score will be valid for 5 years. Moving on. Remember, the GMAT focus is a computer adaptive test. Now, what do we mean with that? When you start the test, you will be given a question of medium level difficulty. And if you get this question right, 
then your next question would be a question of higher difficulty level. If you did get this question over here on the other hand wrong, then your next question would be a question of lower difficulty level. And this is what we mean with a computer adaptive test. Now let's try to understand this. Let's say this is the way that your exam went and over here on the x axis we have the test progressing and on the y axis we have the difficulty level of questions. So notice over here, let's say you started, you got your first question right, so you moved up, so the next question was of a higher difficulty level, then you got your next question also right, so you can see that the difficulty level increased and let's say you got the next question wrong, so the difficulty level goes down and in such a manner, once you finish the exam, you would reach at a particular level and this would determine what your final score is on the GMAT. Alright, so because the GMAT focus is a computer adaptive test, remember not completing the test, that is leaving questions, is highly penalized. Also, if you get back to back questions wrong, it significantly reduces your score, so don't do that. So remember, accuracy is very important on the GMAT and finally remember, scores for all the three sections are used to compute your final score on the GMAT focus. We have seen that there are three sections on the GMAT focus, the verbal reasoning section, the quantitative reasoning section and the data insights section. Now on the test, you can attempt these sections in any order that you choose. Okay, so you could go first with verbal reasoning, then with quantitative reasoning and then with data insights or you can make your own order, right? So any order is possible. Now, when you attempt a section, the GMAT focus allows you to bookmark as many questions as you want. But remember, you have to solve the question and move forward. Now, once you're done with the test, if you have time left, then you will be shown a screen which is called the question review and edit screen. And there you will be able to see all the questions that you have bookmarked and you will be able to review those questions and you're allowed to change your response for up to three answers per section. All right. Now, let's say that these are the three sections and you have chosen some order of attempting them. Now, the GMAT focus allows one optional break of 10 minutes. So you can take this break either over here that is between the first section and the second section or you can take the break over here, which is between the second section and the third section. Now, this break is not mandatory. It's an optional break. All right. So let's say you've chosen to take the break. What are some of the things that you should keep in mind? Remember, I would strongly suggest don't drink too much water during the break so that you don't feel like peeing during the next section, right? So don't drink too much water and maybe eating a chocolate or an apple will help you maintain your mental alertness at its peak for the next section. Now, because we are talking about general points here, let me quickly talk about one more important thing. Ensure that before the exam, you get a good sleep. Now, this is something very crucial, which will either take your score to the next level or bring it down. So ensure that you get a good sleep before the exam. Now, to get good sleep, you can build a good sleeping habit. You can exercise, you can research more about it on YouTube, but do ensure that you get a good sleep on the day before the exam. Now, when it comes to reporting your score, you don't need to select which B school programs are to receive your official score report before you take the exam. Once you're done with the exam, you can send the score to the schools which you want to. Okay. And remember, within 48 hours of your official score being made available at MBA.com, you can choose to send your score to five schools for free. And then if you want to send your score to more schools, you can pay for it and you can do it. You will see your unofficial score immediately after completing the exam, but you're not allowed to take a screenshot of the same and your official score will come after a few days. Probably it can take three to four days or so. Now, many students are confused about the use of a calculator on the GMAT focus. Now, when it comes to a calculator, there are only two sections that are relevant, which is the quantitative reasoning section and the data insight section. 
but for the quantitative reasoning section you are not allowed to use a calculator all right so you are not allowed to use a calculator on the quantitative reasoning section but when it comes to the data insights section you are given an on screen calculator which you can use if required another question that students tend to have is whether they should attempt the gmat focus at a test center or whether they should take it online now you can do it either way whichever works for you but what are some of the major things that you should keep in mind first of all when you're doing it at a test center you can schedule it for 7 days a week during the test center operating hours but when it comes to taking it online you can do it 7 days a week around the clock all right so more convenience if you take it online but then that's not the only criteria go with whichever option you are more comfortable with now one more thing that you should remember is that if you're taking the gmat focus at a test center then for your rough work you will be given five laminated pages and two dry erase markers all right and if you're taking it online then you're allowed to have a physical whiteboard dry erase marker and eraser so these are permitted all right and access to an online whiteboard is provided so do remember based on which format you choose do practice with these things for your rough work when you're actually preparing for your gmat so remember it's important to decide which option you are going for and then do practice with the allowed scratch work resources finally it's important to practice with mocks once you're done with your structured preparation for which this course will immensely help you so once you're done with your fundamentals once you have done sufficient practice and you're strong on what is going to be tested on the exam do take mocks now remember the gmat gives you two free mocks at mba.com so do make use of them so once you're familiar with the tested topics do give the mocks it's very important to give mocks to strengthen your time management skills so that you don't miss out on the exam day and remember always if you want more mocks you can buy them at mba.com i hope this video has helped you get a good idea about the gmat focus edition all the best in your preparation and see you in the course